We are exploring the Four Corners region of the United States, the area where the borders of Utah, Colorado, Arizona and New Mexico intersect. And we are doing all this aboard a rental RV. So much fun. This is day three of our adventure. Good morning. Nothing like a shot of Cuban coffee to start your day. Yep, I'm awake now. Today we are visiting Mesa Verde National Park, near Cortez, Colorado. This area was uh, home to the ancestral Pueblo people for about 700 years, and then in the late 1200s, for reasons that are not entirely clear, they all moved away. The brand new visitor center opened in 2012, and it has all these displays uh, depicting how archaeologists uh, think the ancestral Pueblo people lived uh, daily life the tools they used, how they made their pottery, and how they built their different types of dwellings. Let's go into the park. Oh, by the way, one very important thing to keep in mind is that in order to visit the main sites, such as the Cliff Palace, the Balcony House, the Long House, you must purchase the tickets beforehand at the visitor center. It would really suck to drive all the way into the park and not be able to see at least one of these sites. We have a pretty long uphill drive here uh, to the Mesa's top at 8,500 feet. Fantastic panoramic views of the Mancos and Montezuma valleys. We stop here briefly at the Montezuma Valley Overlook. Very nice views of the valley. And it's also where the old uh, Knife Edge Road used to go through. Sometimes I leave the camera on inadvertently and get these nice time lapses. Further along, uh, we have a fortuitous encounter with a baby black bear. And leave it up to me to show up with a big RV and scare him away. Sorry to spoil the show, folks. And another great view of the valley. The camera just doesn't do it justice. And another pretty time lapse. You gotta love the clouds. We reach the top of the mesa and stop by a primitive pit house. One of the many in the area. Because of their partial underground construction with a roof, they were warm in the winter and cool in the summer. And typically had a small antechamber and a larger main chamber. Our next stop is the Navajo Canyon Overlook where we get this uh, pretty good view of the canyon. As the weather begins to deteriorate, we stop by the Sun Temple. From here we can see the Cliff Palace, which we will visit next. In our excitement, we forget to see the actual Sun Temple. Maybe we'll have time later. Let's visit the Cliff Palace. First, uh, we go down these abrupt stairs with these great views of the canyon and another dwelling on the other side. Here we are, waiting for the guide. We go up this ladder right next to the structure. We are treated to this uh, very thorough exposition by this very enthusiastic and knowledgeable ranger. We learn about their water source, which apparently seeped uh, through the rocks from snow melt above. A seep spring. Pretty much, if you think about it, it's a leaky faucet. About every 500 feet, usually down the canyon, there's some dwelling, some structure inside, either just hanging off on one of the shelves, it's maybe two feet wide, or they've got a nice little alcove right there. They even had some sort of aqueduct. The dwelling had three stories at the highest point, and the top was used for storage. The family gathered in these uh, round rooms called kivas, which uh, featured many technologies inherited from the above-ground people. Most interesting to me is the ventilation system, which had this small wall in front of the air intake to deflect the air around the fire, push the smoke up, and reflect the heat from the fire pit. The tower in the center was a watchtower, observatory, and possibly also used as a clock. Of course, there is a much more lengthy explanation of all this, which I have included in an extended version. 
It is incredible to think that we had no idea this civilization existed until 1888, when these uh, ruins were discovered by ranchers. That was uh, one great tour, wasn't it? <laughs> Let me tell you, I have nothing but praise for the National Park Service. I have not met one person who wasn't pleasant, helpful or extremely passionate about their job. Before traveling further west, we stop one last time by the Fire Lookout, the highest point in the park, at 8,572 feet above sea level. From the park point overlook, we get to see these spectacular panoramic views of the Montezuma Valley. We can even see the town of Cortez in the distance. That's it. We are leaving the park for good, with beautiful views as we descend from the Mesa. We pass by the Ute Mountain Indian Reservation, and yes, they do have a casino. The Chimney Rock to our left. We turn to the west, immersing ourselves into one of the most remote areas of North America. It is our intent to reach the epicenter of the Four Corners region, the very spot where the borders of Utah, Colorado, Arizona and New Mexico intersect. Two hours later, we arrive at the Four Corners Monument. Here I am at the Four Corners Monument. That's Utah, back there. And here I'm walking and now I'm in Colorado. It's from weed. Now I'm in New Mexico. And now I am in Arizona. One hour earlier. Later. Okay. Recent surveys have determined that the monument is actually 1,807 feet east of the actual Four Corners point. Still, pretty accurate considering the instruments available at the turn of the 20th century. When they originally surveyed the area, I do have one complaint. The grounds are not very well maintained. You would think that with the $15 the Navajo people charge you to visit the monument and the revenue from all the souvenir sales, they could afford a paved parking lot. Just saying. Onward we go. I, of course, uh, take a photo with uh, the nearby signs for New Mexico and Colorado and let's include Arizona and Utah as well. Nice, huh? This is the only time in our trip where we actually step on New Mexico soil. We continue riding into the sunset, now going deep into the Navajo Nation, which is a huge area encompassing northeastern Arizona, parts of New Mexico and Utah. After a little over an hour or so, we start seeing the formations of the Valley of the Gods in the horizon. Let me tell you, I would love to do some exploring around this area. The Valley of the Gods uh, is like a smaller version of Monument Valley, if you will, uh, where we're going tomorrow, by the way. But unlike Monument Valley, it's not part of the Navajo Nation. It belongs to the Bureau of Land Management, which means you can camp in the area and have more freedom to roam around. As the night falls, we arrive at Guznecks National Park, where we will boondock for the night. I picked uh, this location mainly because it is very close to the Valley of the Gods, the Mexican Hat and Monument Valley, which we can actually see in the distance. We have this beautiful view overlooking a deep meander of the San Juan River. But another reason why I picked this location is because of the lack of light pollution. Tonight, after the moon sets, I look forward to seeing the Milky Way for the first time in my life. We see these beautiful moonlight reflections on the San Juan River, and eventually the moon sets, and then stars I've never seen before reveal themselves, and the Milky Way, of course. I even experiment with some long exposure photography. With less than two hours of sleep, we look forward to the next day. Good morning! In the next video, we will visit Monument Valley, which is a spectacularly unique place, better known as the backdrop of many Hollywood westerns. I hope you have enjoyed our adventure so far. 
By the way, don't forget to subscribe and check out my previous videos. Also, visit the blog, follow me on Facebook, Twitter and other social media. Until the next time, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.